Today we are going to see the second chapter which is globe, latitudes and longitudes. In the previous chapter, you have read that our planet Earth is not a sphere. It is slightly flattened at the north and the south poles and bulge in the middle. Can you imagine how it looks? You may look at a globe carefully in your classroom to get an idea. Globe is a true model, which is miniature form of the Earth. Globes may be of varying size and type, big ones which cannot be carried easily, small pocket globes and globe-like balloons, which can be inflated and are handy and carried with ease. The globe is not fixed. It can be rotated the same way as a top spin or a potter's wheel is rotated. On the globe, countries, continents and oceans are shown in their correct size. It is difficult to describe the location of a point on a sphere like the Earth. Now the question arises as to how to locate a place on it. We need certain points of reference and lines to find out the location of places. You will notice that a needle is fixed through the globe in a tilted manner, which is called its axis. Two points on the globe through which the needle passes are two poles, North Pole and South Pole. The globe can be moved around this needle from west to east, just as the earth moves. But remember there is a major difference. The earth has no such needle. It moves around its axis which is an imaginary line. Another imaginary line running on the globe divides it into two equal parts. This line is known as the equator. The northern half of the earth is known as the northern hemisphere and the southern half of the earth is known as southern hemisphere. They are both equal halves. Therefore, the equator is an imaginary circular line and is a very important reference point to locate places on the Earth. All parallel circles from the equator up to the poles are called parallels of latitudes. Latitudes are measured in degrees. The equator represents the zero degree latitude. Since the distance from the equator to either of the poles is one fourth of a circle round the Earth, it will measure one fourth of 360 degrees, that is 90 degrees. Thus, 90 degrees north latitude marks the north pole and 90 degrees south latitude marks the south pole. As such, all parallels north of the equator are called north latitudes. Similarly, all parallels south of the equator are called south latitudes. The value of each latitude is therefore followed by either the word north or south. Generally, this is indicated by the letter N or S. For example, both Chandrapur in Maharashtra in India and Belo Horizonte in Brazil in South America are located on parallels of about 20 degrees latitude. But the former is 20 degrees north of the equator and the latter is 20 degrees south of it. We therefore say that Chandrapur is situated at 20 degrees north latitude and Belo Horizonte is situated at 20 degrees south latitude. We can see in this figure that as we move away from the equator, the size of the parallels of latitude decreases. Besides the equator which is 0 degree, the north pole is 90 degrees north and the south pole is 90 degrees south. There are four important parallels of latitudes. First one is Tropic of Cancer which is 23 and half degrees north in the northern hemisphere. Second one is Tropic of Capricorn which is 23 and half degrees south in the southern hemisphere. Third one is Arctic Circle at 66 and half degrees north of the equator. And the fourth one is Antarctic Circle at 66 and half degrees south of the equator. The midday sun is exactly overhead at least once a year on all latitudes in between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. This area therefore receives the maximum heat and is called the Torrid Zone. The midday sun never shines overhead on any latitude beyond the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. The angle of the sun's rays goes on decreasing towards the poles. As such, the areas bounded by the Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere and the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic Circle in the Southern Hemisphere have moderate temperatures. These are therefore called temperate zones. Areas lying between the Arctic Circle and the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere and the Antarctic Circle and the South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere are very cold. It is because here the sun does not rise much above the horizon. Therefore, its rays are always slanting and provide less heat. These are therefore called frigid zones, which are very cold. To fix the position of a place, it is necessary to know something more than the latitude of that place. You can see for example that Tonga Islands in the Pacific Ocean and Mauritius Islands in the Indian Ocean are situated on the same latitude, that is 20 degrees south. Now in order to locate them precisely, we must find out how far east or west these places are from a given line of reference running from the North Pole to the South Pole. 
These lines of references are called the meridians of longitude and the distances between them are measured in degrees of longitude. Each degree is further divided into minutes and minutes into seconds. They are semicircles and the distance between them decreases steadily polewards until it becomes zero at the poles where all the meridians meet. Unlike parallels of latitude, all meridians are of equal length. Thus, it was difficult to number the meridians. Hence, all countries decided that the count should begin from the meridian which passed through Greenwich, where the British Royal Observatory is located. This meridian is called the Prime Meridian. Its value is 0 degree longitude and from it we count 180 degree eastward as well as 180 degree westward. The Prime Meridian and 180 degree meridian divide the Earth into two equal halves, the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. Therefore, the longitude of a place is followed by the letter E for the east and W for the west. It is however interesting to note that 180 degree east and 180 degree west meridians are on the same line. Now look at the grid of the parallels of latitude and meridians of longitude on the globe. You can locate any point on the globe very easily if you know its latitude and longitude. For example, Dubri in Assam is situated at 26 degrees north latitude and 90 degrees east longitude. Find out the point where these two lines cut each other. That point will be the location of Dubri. To understand this clearly, draw equidistant vertical and horizontal lines on a paper. Label the vertical rows with the numbers and horizontal rows with letters. Draw some small circles randomly on points where these horizontal and vertical lines intersect with each other. Name these small circles as A, B, C, D and E. Let vertical lines represent east longitudes and horizontal lines as north latitudes. Now you will see that circle A is located on B degrees north latitude and 1 degree east longitude. Find out the location of other circles. The best means of measuring time is by the movement of the earth, the moon and the planets. The sun regularly rises and sets every day and naturally it is the best timekeeper throughout the world. Local time can be reckoned by the shadow cast by the sun which is the shortest at noon and longest at sunrise and sunset. When the prime meridian of Greenwich has the sun at the highest point in the sky, all the places along this meridian will have midday or noon. As the earth rotates from west to east, those places east of Greenwich will be ahead of Greenwich time and those to the west will be behind it. The rate of difference can be calculated as follows. The earth rotates 360 degrees in about 24 hours, which means 15 degrees an hour or 1 degree in 4 minutes. Thus, when it is 12 noon at Greenwich, the time at 15 degree east of Greenwich will be 15 into 4 is equal to 60 minutes, that is 1 hour ahead of Greenwich time, which means 1 pm, but at 15 degree west of Greenwich, the time will be behind Greenwich time by 1 hour, that is, it will be 11 am. Similarly, at 180 degrees, it will be midnight when it is 12 noon at Greenwich. At any place, a watch can be adjusted to read 12 o'clock when the sun is at the highest point in the sky, that is when it is the midday. The time shown by such a watch will give the local time for that place. You can see that all the places on a given meridian of longitude have the same local time. The local time of places which are on different meridians are bound to differ. For example, it will be difficult to prepare a timetable for trains which cross several longitudes. In India, for instance, there will be a difference of about 1 hour and 45 minutes in the local times of Dwarka in Gujarat and the Dibrugarh in Assam. It is therefore necessary to adopt the local time of the central meridian of a country as the standard time for the country. In India, the longitude of 82 and half degrees east, which is 82 degrees and 30 minutes east, is treated as the standard meridian. The local time at this meridian is taken as the standard time for the whole country. It is known as the Indian Standard Time (IST). India, located east of Greenwich at 82 degrees 30 minutes east, is 5 hours and 30 minutes ahead of global mean time. Some countries have a great longitudinal extent and so they have adopted more than one standard time. For example, in Russia, there are as many as 11 standard times. The earth has been divided into 24 time zones of 1 hour each. Each zone thus covers 15 degrees of longitude. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.